Good morning and welcome to Weekend Walkabout in our Gardens and Years virtually. Coming to you from garden to Z.org. I'm Janet McConovich. I'm Stephen Nicola. And we're talking today, our main topic is pruning overgrown plants. Uh, that's us. On, uh, wait, it's a little warmer when I go and sit outside. What kind of shoes am I wearing? I can't even recognize You've got shoes. tennis shoes on. Wow, I don't even recognize them. Your the boots shoes. got so wet. You had to that's you right. borrowed, that was, out, you that borrowed somebody else's shoes. Yep. And with us is Sonia Nicola. Our daughter, who is uh, um, in charge of the chat and all things technical, she is a great gardener, so she often answers her questions that she's taking from chat and lining up for us and for a question and answer session. And she's right when she answers. Um, but she's also a professor at, at the University of Toronto. She's been using virtual technology and helping her colleagues yeah. use virtual technology for two years. So if you've got a technical problem, put it in the chat. Um, so that There's Sonia a chance can she could help. Yeah. There's a real good chance. Um, we've been writing and teaching about gardening since about um, eight, nine years after we started gardening professionally. We realized that we were learning so much being in other situations in other gardens that we really needed to hand that off to other people. And when we started writing for the Detroit News, where we wrote for 13 years, or Michigan Gardener, where we wrote for 10 years, we got questions from people. That's what we based the column on. And we logged about 11,000 questions in 13 years. And it was 11,000 places we never would have been, situations that we never thought could happen. Um, you notice patterns. Wait a minute. We just got three letters from this one area. About the same about thing. About the same thing. What's going on? Yeah. So we thought we need to write more about that. And uh, we have a responsibility to tell other gardeners and to keep getting this stuff coming in. So we started the website GardenAtoZ.org. And it's uh, where it's a labor of love um, and it is being kept going. It is being funded entirely by webinar subscriptions now, um, which is which is fantastic because it is expensive to do, especially with programming um, and the time that it takes to put things together. So we really appreciate those of you who subscribe to our webinars, whether you subscribe for the whole season or a little little bit at a time. Um, the subscriptions are, are available now for season three, which starts next month very shortly. Um, and in case you're wondering how that works, those of you who've been subscribers in, in either season one or season two or both, you are the people that made this possible and we will always be giving you a break. So we're calling you groundbreakers and where the entire season, which is 12 um, live uh, webinars like we're talking about right now with with set topics. We have 12 with set topics. We have another 14 where we don't have set topics, where we, uh, Steve and I are able to make that topic that week. And those 14 we've put into the heavy um, interest months when people mm -hmm. are most doing most things in the garden in from the end of April through June, and then in September and October. Um, so your subscription for the year, if you are um, just coming in to us and a, a new person, then it's $350, buys you all of those webinars. That's 28, 26, 20, I can't well, even add up. Every all, webinar that we're gonna do. <laughs> and, it, and it gives you access to all three <laughs> webinars that are already in the library that, that, uh, all that you can look ones. at. But if you, are, if you are one of our groundbreakers, that whole package, all of those webinars um, and the library access is $225. And as a groundbreaker, you can extend that um, that discount to one other person. Um, we, we've kind of done the algebra and we yeah. can let you bring one other person in at that lower rate. But this year we're also offering that if you'd like to just subscribe to the, the 12 pre-decided um, uh, pre uh, the topics that are set that we can walk about, there is a, a package where you can come in just for that or where you can get a three webinar package or just get an individual webinar um, we figure we, we now can handle we'll the administration. See what happens. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see whether we can keep up with that administration. We would prefer subscriptions. All it of that. Makes well, it easy. Well, they're all subscriptions. <laughs> We'd, um, uh, all of that is on our website, gardenazy.org, under webinars and sponsorships. There's a, 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 a subscribe page. Just click subscribe on any of our pages yeah. and it'll take you to that <clears> listing. <throat> Thank you very much for subscribing and for letting me, yes. letting me wing that there. I didn't think about what I had to say. And, and can we also just very quickly, Barbara's clarifying, so it's 26 total webinars. It's not every Saturday. There will also be the alternative uh, options, um, like, uh, uh, yeah, like some of the, the special uh, in-person um, webinar follow-ups. 
That's right. Oh. We have that's right. We have we have 26 webinars. We the first of each month, the first Saturday of each month, there is a webinar. And it doesn't matter. And it's a preset it's, topic. Yep. That that's uh it's on there's a schedule for those. Um and then there are 14 others that are um on those weekend Saturdays, but not the first Saturday of the month. Um the uh we also have we're now resuming going out into the garden and meeting people we call them garden by janet and steve and we will give those we will announce those first to people and who are subscribers so you have the first chance to say yes i would like to come and see you prune that japanese maple at joanne's house or whatever it is that that we're doing um, that's another um, part of being a subscriber is the first chance at those things is that what i was supposed to tell you sonia i'm sorry that works. And, and yes, we do record all of our webinars. Um, the subscribers, uh, this webinar is public. So this webinar will be on our public YouTube channel on Monday or Tuesday. Or you can find the link on our free webinars page. Uh, or if you're on the private webinars, they're in a private library that when you're a subscriber, you get the links to those. Right. You have a, you have a catalog of all of those. Thank you for asking. We start each week in our um, uh, weekend walkabouts. We start each week with just what's going on in the garden right now so, so that we can talk about what's happening right now. It's one of the departments in our news section. Our news section on our website is What's Up. So if you went to What's Up, it's like opening the newspaper. Then the sections, the departments open up main features this week, green thumbs up and down. Um, 45 mile an hour. 45 mile an hour garden. This week in our gardens is what's going on right now. And um, what's going on right now is, well, we're back inside. It's snowing out my window and probably out the windows of other many other people here. Um, we introduced you to the mini garden um, a couple of months ago when Steve saddled me with a bunch of plants. That was your idea. I know it was my idea that we needed to have some plants. But um, since we told you what's going on, we have to tell you a little bit about them right now. It's gotten a little crowded there because I went to the garden center. And I, <laughs> I had back. a walk in a greenhouse and I came back with a prayer plant and a, and a beautiful little aeonium. Um, look at that aeonium. Is that gorgeous? Wouldn't you pick that up and have to have to find a place for it too? Um, I've gotten some favorites out of them. I like this little variegated Aurelia. And although it's gotten so heavy for the pot, um, this, uh, um, uh oh, it is, it's an Aeonium too. This Aeonium has gotten so it falls over more times. Than Just it. getting it to stand to take the picture was a challenge. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to get some bigger pots. I'll probably put them all outside and then just at the end of the year leave them outside. Um, but what's happening, what's been happening for the last three weeks and a little more than three weeks is they're all growing. Now they're under light, so they've been growing for the three months that they've been out there, but now we're seeing new growth because the days are getting longer and they're sensing that longer light, ambient light coming in the window. Isn't that's, it cute? That's <laughs> little little aloes these, popping up over the like these gills. are new. The the venation is in the brighter green, and then that little bit of bright green. But right everything there. on that calanchoe is new. Yeah. I cut that calanchoe oh, back right. after it bloomed. I cut it back to just one big leaf. And it sprouted new, and now I've taken that big leaf off. That's all brand new, um, and the, it's hard to tell on the um, echeveria that there's new growth. But what it is is the center keeps growing, and I keep taking off the, the leaves that get older on the outside of the rosette. So they're growing, and we've we've been fertilizing them. And we're we're remiss in not telling you that we we put uh, a fertilizer, a dilute fertilizer, every time we water. So um, there's just maybe a, a a tenth of the norm of the record. I haven't fertilized, but I watered twice. So there's Oops, two times. I didn't, I didn't tell you to. Fertilize. Okay. But fertilizing, the, when the new growth begins, that's a time to fertilize. And it's why having a slow release fertilizer out in the garden is a good idea. Um, and now that you've taken these pictures, I look and go, why is it discolored on the Yes. Top? I pinched back there? the top of that calanchoe. And so now it has four leaves at the top rather than just two. But it wasn't until, you know, you have to look close once in a while and go, why is that discolored? The, the brownish discolor. Something's going on there. I got to take a better look at that. Um, and this Dracaena, the neighbor was afraid to cut her big Dracaena back that was brushing the ceiling. I said, you can cut it back. It'll, and and uh, she said, oh, but then there won't be much anything on it. I said, well, you can always stick the pieces and they'll root. They'll root, she said. So of course, when I told her to stick them in sand, they came over to our house with this big bucket of sand and, and Dracaena stuck in it that I felt compelled to make sure that I kept it in case 
her other plant should die. Yeah. Um, that sprout showed up on the 1st of March, just like things do. March is when things resume growing, and now it's time to, to get going here. And they're doing sneaky things. I can see it. This guy. This guy, this fern is driving me crazy because it really wants it more humid than we've got. Can it you see that? See that feeler going across? That little. Can you give me back there? Yes. Yeah. See it going across? That's uh, that's an air route. And it's reaching over into the, the African violet also likes it moist. So it's been watered more often than the others have. So and it it's, it's reaching over. Hey, so buddy, can, can you share, share some, some water? water? Yeah. <laughs> I love watching them do that. Okay, so inside, we've been inside, but also there were several nice days that I was outside this week, and uh, I've got a class after we're done here in the webinar. We have a, a workshop at Tollgate, um, uh, and it's a hands-on dividing. I said, oh, well, I'm going to grab some of the things that need dividing out there. This is a butterfly bush that was a seedling, and it's a particularly nice seedling, <laughs> given the choice of five butterfly bushes <laughs> within the yard. The butterflies all come to this one. I don't know they, do. they do. They come to this one. And it's just a seedling off of one of the others. So um, I said, well, we need to make more of this one. So I dug all the way around it. Um, you can do the pointer, Steve, because I keep clicking too many times. I, I uh, sliced around it. I just put the shovel in and sliced down hard in order to cut roots so I wouldn't be ripping roots out. And then tied it up so that I could get the canes out of my face. I could have done it in reverse order. I probably should have tied it first. Um, then I took the fork and started working back around where I had cut and started loosening all the way around. Just keep popping. Uh, just keep walking around and walking around and lifting it until I could lift it out of the ground. Um, and I, I tell people it pays to know what the roots are that you're looking at. I know that butterfly roots are wide, shallow, very wide and shallow. Very wide. And very woody. Um, I'll be able to make at least three or four shrubs out of this one. That will come later when we show you that's how that's done. Yeah. But uh, I, I used the uh, loppers and lopped off those roots that went beyond where I was cutting and followed the root that's off to the right until, well, it got tangled into the juniper roots. It was over here. Uh, chances are good that that root went twice as far as you see right there. Um, that's how these plants can manage in the drought. Yeah. They are culling from a long way around. I also needed a piece of peony, and this peony. Yeah, the red buds. See the pink buds there? I'm clearing the mulch away so I can see where was that peony exactly. Um, on the left is a branch from a U. That peony was beginning to make the U hollow out on that side. It's it's gotten too big. So I'm not going to take the whole peony out of the ground. I'm just going to slice right across the middle of it, and I needed to find the middle of it to take out the part that's closer to the U because I don't want it killing the U. This U is a star of today's program. So it comes up along with some bulbs and a worm. I see a worm there. Um, and the bulbs can move now too. So might just as well, I dug up a clump of galanthus. The snowdrops are laying there with it um, because those can be divided. Um, they move very well. They move better in the green, as it's called, than as a bulb. As a bulb, when you put in snowdrops, Sometimes they don't sprout the next year. They may wait two years mm -hmm. or three years to sprout. But uh, when you move them when they're green, you, you're sure that they're gonna make the move. And since we're talking about bulbs, I said, I, I didn't finish thinning out those huge clumps of daffodil bulbs. Huge, big clumps that we have. Yeah, not productive. There's gonna be a bunch of those in there that are not blooming size. So I've cleared the mulch away. And once you clear the mulch away, you can see the, the lighter color that was under the mulch. Those are quite capable of coming up through stuff. When I put them back in the ground, I'm gonna put them back in the ground deeper. I'm gonna yep. bury them. They could go even farther down. Yeah, I literally buried all the green. On one we side. knew this wasn't bulbs that she planted because she got it at less than a spade's depth. Right, I, less than a spade's depth. You can see my hand is there underneath the clump I'm lifting up. We put our bulbs in much deeper than that, 12 inches down. So when those get replanted, I bury them entirely, just put them up, up straight up and down. Um, I also took out some clumps of daisy because, uh, show them where it is. See the purple leaves in the foreground center? You got that pointer. Right here. That's sour sorrel, a weed that crept in from the lawn, and it's a creeping thread-like colony all mixed up in those daisies. So there's nothing to do except take the daisies out and sort everything out and get rid of all that sour, sour sorrel. Um, so daisies are coming up. That's, again, where you need to know your roots. Yeah, 
<clears throat> and then there's this the problem of the sedums that have not been divided in so long, see the one of joy. And that clump there on the top left has actually started making a dent in the blue spruce behind it because it's shading out the bottom branches. So I'm going to take it out. And when I take it out, it splits itself into three. That's the bottom right All picture. by itself. All by itself, it's split into three. And it split the, the fracture lines that it split along. I see the tiny bulbs there and there and there, tiny, tiny buds. That's, that's the center old part that's become so crowded that, and weak that it fell apart from the rest of it. Where meanwhile, the outside edge down at the bottom. Look how vigorous they're that, growing yeah. compared so I will throw out all the weak stuff and put in the other the uh, stuff that's lively. And then there's a bunch of um, blue flag iris. It's uh, one of our native um, edge, of the, edge of the water irises that uh, has gotten to where they're crowding around the base of the butterfly bush. So I'm gonna take them out. Whenever you um, dig around a woody plant that you care about, remember that those roots go out a long way so see how she's going radially dig radially with the braid whatever yeah. that word is yeah so I move that butterfly bush dig across the roots like i was doing but if you want to save it then take the iris out by digging radially and taking out pie shaped pieces you're much less likely to be cutting roots of you still bush. will but yeah, yeah um and then last but not least i got some perennial geranium out because i need to show people underground runners and i've heard people say boy i wish things would start growing Take a, what do you see when you look close? Start growing? They've been growing for a month. See that end of that root has just taken off. And All then that, the green got up and it said, ha. ha. Yeah, and they're taking off. Everything is growing right now. It's a great time to move things around. Um, as I go along today, we're, we're going to show you where many of these things are articles on the website already. Um, because we have a lot to cover in a short period of time today when it comes to pruning overgrown plants. Yeah. There is a lot there. We have an overgrown talk. Yeah. <laughs> and and we want to start with the, what we heard Mr. Masters say. He was a, he was a third generation um, uh, apple orchardist. And he was well into his 70s when he told me, when I go out in the orchard, when the guys are pruning, if I'm not scared about how much they've cut, then they haven't cut enough. Um, and this is somebody who spent his whole life watching how much people prune. So don't worry when we tell you that we're cutting how much off. This is not a matter of that problem. We, we believe in the saying, cut weak wood hard. Yeah, take it. And prune harder for less cutting overall. And with that, we'll tell you, you can search almost anything on our site. I found out Arborvitae Cut got me way too many responses, 713, yeah because we've only got about 300 articles about the actual cutting but there you go so any questions about in our garden before we move on to pruning overgrown plants we do have a couple of questions um so uh termination terminology clarification from judith what do you mean by radially radially um take the shrub or or a woody plant that you're concerned about and draw spokes out from it like the radiating spokes on a wheel so if the trunk is there your hand is the the roots are going out you try to cut up in line with, in, in line, line with the with radius the yeah so that if there's a root running there you're running in the same direction not cutting across it but running in the same direction you're not going to avoid cutting you're just trying to avoid major cutting yeah, to let us know if that yeah Think, think of cutting, cutting a pie, pie slice. Yeah. Yes, Very good, you. Joyce. Thank you. Yes. Oh, chef. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so Maria says, after you divide the butterfly bush, how far down are you going? How far will you cut it down? Is this a good time to cut uh, hers down? She's in Northeast Mass. All the way down. I cut it down so you can walk on it. I don't want any stubble building up year by year by year. Same. Um, I cut it all the way down, and it is a good time to do it. I cut the other butterfly bushes down already. The all the way. And there. And there was a question about whether um, Budlia are toxic to butterflies. And I said, I think this has to do with the concerns around um, Budlia and invasiveness. And so for everyone's sake, keep those butterfly bushes well under control. Keep them locked all the way down. And we're going to try and try and ride herd on them. Yeah. Well, we're, what, what we try to do with butterfly bushes is not let so many of them set seed. And for the most part, in our, uh, you need to look at the invasive plants talk and look at the EDD. Yeah 
ES maps, uh, the EDD maps system. Um, we're probably okay with butterfly bush in our area. And are they toxic? No, they are not no. toxic to the, the, the butterflies. Um, not unless someone has used the systemic insecticide on Then they're toxic. When when you spray an insecticide that's systemic and it takes Don't it spray pesticides. Don't use just them. Just don't do it. We haven't used them in since Sonia, since I was pregnant with Sonia for crying out loud. And, and we're not even going to say how old Sonia is now because no. I don't want to know. <laughs> I am now double the age of the students that I teach. Okay, all right. Uh, then the the last one for this first session, I think, is Janet H. Just clarifying, should you use a slow release fertilizer on uh, on transplanted perennials? And I said we tend to use slow re release in all cases. But would you want to clarify on that? We do use slow release in, in every case we possibly can. Once in a while, in the middle of the year, on a heavy feeder like a clematis or a delphinium, we might use a water soluble fertilizer. But on the garden, not on the plant. The transplanted plant does not need anything if it's going into a garden where other things grow. But if you have a, a deficiency in the garden, we have a potassium deficiency in our current yep. yard. So a slow release fertilizer, fertilizer, banana peels in our case. We tend to go organic. Yeah. Um, or, or one of the purchased slow release fertilizers is a good thing to keep on the soil. And April and October are real good times to put it, to put it down. Great. So that's what we have for now. And I will say we've already got a lot of pruning questions coming in. Uh, and if we don't get to all of them in the Q&As during the session, then uh, Janet will do a tra chat transcript at some point where she kind of follows up on, uh, on questions. So yeah. fear not, they're all getting logged one way or another. And we send those chat transcripts out to people along with the notice of what the recording link is. And we post them on the website with the note-taking guides. Are they cute? They're so cute. So that's it for in our garden. We're moving on to pruning overgrown plants. And we break these, these uh, sessions up like this so that we can put the recording in in pieces and you don't have to watch the whole thing to find the part you want. <laughs>